Welcome everyone and thank you for joining the webinar today on NearWorks and Persist Advanced ICU Solution. I am Francesco Mucci, I am the EEG ICU LTM Clinical Application Specialist at Netus Medical for EMEA region. I will be hosting the session and I will be your speaker and presenter today. Before to start with the presentation, I would like to provide you with some general and important webinar information. Natus Neurology Train Academy is a new platform that's focused on educational programs to better support customers in the use and optimization of Natus products. In addition to the invitation for this webinar, you should have received the webinar calendar for the current year with all scheduled webinars. So if you didn't get the calendar, please ask your regional manager for a copy of it or go directly to visit the Neurology Train Academy website where you can find all the upcoming webinars. On the website, you also have a free access to the clinical links section where you will be able to review a collection of valuable clinical notes and papers for each modality in the Natus Neurology portfolio. Before starting the webinar, I would like to take the opportunity to inform you that Natus Neurology Train Academy also arranges extra and advanced service and system operation training courses in Munich and Dubai. You can find all the information related to the trainings in the website or you can ask your regional manager for receiving the training calendar and so trying to join us at the next trainings. About me, I am a biomedical engineer and I graduated at the University of Florence in Italy and I did the internship at Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. I worked for an important Italian company for five years and I have been working in Natus Medical for two years. The purpose of the webinar today is to introduce and show you Persist, which is an important software tool which is mainly required and used for performing continuous monitoring in ICU. I will start a brief introduction to Persist, illustrating the goal of the application and identifying the main end users who typically require and use the software. Then I will describe the benefits and advantages of the software. At the end of this presentation, I will show you the steps for activating the Persist Analysis and the Persist Workspace in Nearworks, describing the EEG view and the trend view with their main comments. After the presentation, I will give you a live demonstration by using the software. Let's start with the introduction. Persist ICU Continuous Monitoring provides the most comprehensive collection of features for continuous EEG monitoring, allowing neurologists, neurointensivists and technicians to quickly detect non-convulsive seizures and other clinically important changes in the EEG as they are occurring. ICU Continuous Monitoring provides trending and online seizure detection and continuous EEG trending. Records are processed as they are being acquired with trends and detections updating in real time. Channels are automatically monitored for electrode artifacts, which are removed from seizure and trend processing. Electrodes, which have persistent electrical artifacts, are indicated to alert staff to the need for correction, resulting in cleaner recordings. Persist ICU Continuous Monitoring includes all the features of Persist Long-Term Monitoring, making it ideal for environments where equipment is used across the EMU and ICU. Regarding benefits and advantages, we can identify some important aspects. First of all, the Persist interface is completely integrated into Nearworks so that users will be able to use the same database and EEG software for acquiring, reviewing and analyzing studies by switching between the EEG view and the trend view. Users can perform the Persist analysis both offline and online and all events generated by the analysis will be automatically entered and saved into the study 
so that users will be able to rapidly review the recording. No user intervention is required because NeuroWorks and Persist use a predefined template which collects the main trends and analyses required in ICU. Users need just to activate and run the persist analysis and either the system will return the final results if this analysis is performed offline or the system will show the results in real time if the analysis is performed online during the recording. In addition, skilled users have the opportunity to define and create new custom templates according to their needs by selecting and collecting the trends from the complete list provided by Persist. Last but not least, the Persist Continuous Monitoring Pack includes the Inside2 application, which is an external program which provides advanced analysis tools like advanced EEG voltage and frequency analysis and EEG voltage and frequency mapping. In the next few slides, I will show you the steps for activating the persist analysis. Once the Natus database is open, you have to click on Tools in the main menu and then on Options. When the Natus database options window appears, click on the Analysis tab and then click on the Add button on the right in order to open the scrolling menu and showing the analyzers list then select Persist from the list. At this stage, you can select the study type, EEG, SLEEP or both types, to which you want to add the Persist analysis. Typically, users set EEG and the activation option selecting between always and never. Select always in order to start detection immediately once the study begins, recording or never for using the batch analyzer to analyze studies offline. Note that before selecting and using the analysis, you have to install and activate both Persist and the license on your acquisition or review station. If you need to run an analysis on all the studies, you will be able to perform the analysis offline. Directly from within the Natus database, you have to select your study and click on the Analyze button on the main toolbar at the top, highlighted with the red box. Then the Analyze window pops up and you have to check the box which corresponds to Persist with the blue check mark, as it's shown in the picture. It means that the, the analysis is enabled. Then click on Submit and wait until the process is completed. Please note that if the study has a long duration, the offline analysis will take several minutes, especially when you want to analyze LTM and ICU recordings. In this regard, I suggest you to run the analysis online during the recording so that once the recording has been completed, you will immediately get the results when you open the study in review mode. The Persist workspace is typically composed by three sections. The annotation viewer on the left, the EG view in the middle and the trend view on the right side. Users can customize the layout and save different workspaces according to own need. In the annotation viewer, all events collected during the recording are displayed in the chronological order. You can find both Excel Tech events entered by the system and the user who performed the recording and Persist events generated by Persist as results of the analysis, for instance spikes and seizures. Clicking on each event, the system immediately jumps to the point in the EEG and shows you the related event both in the EEG view and in the trends view as they are synchronized. The EEG view displays the EEG montage with the opportunity to change it and modify the visualization parameters like filters, sensitivity and time base 
as they are commonly used in any EEG program. Last but not least, users have the opportunity to enable the artifact reduction option, which detects and reduces artifact. Many of the artifacts caused by EMG electrodes and high movement are removed, resulting in a much clearer EEG. The original signal is always shown in the background in a grey color, allowing you to see what has been changed as it's shown in this example. The trans view shows you the trends that have been calculated offline or in real time during the recording. Users can use a default template named Pinel in Persist of trends which shows the most common and used trends in ICU. They also have the opportunity to create different templates with different trends and then click on the Select Panel button in order to select the desired template. In addition, by using the same template, you also can have the opportunity to add one or more trends to the existing panel just clicking on Add Trend and selecting the desired trend. As I previously said, one of the most important benefits is that no user intervention is required for running a new trend analysis. Users just need to choose and select the trend and then the system automatically loads the default parameters and configuration and returns the results. Even in the trend view, users can enable the artifact reduction feature. With much of the artifact removed, Calculations are now almost entirely representative of cerebral activity, making trending an even more reliable tool. The ICU Comprehensive Template, or panel, is the default panel that's used in EarWorks. The panel is composed by six trends, seizure probability, rhythmicity spectrogram, left and right hemisphere, FFT spectrogram, left and right hemisphere, Asymmetry index absolute and relative, relative asymmetry spectrogram left and right hemisphere, and suppression ratio left and right hemisphere. As I previously said, users are able to add more trends to the current panel by clicking on the Add button in the main menu and selecting the desired trend. Persist trending includes both seizure detection and seizure probability trends. These are closely related and represent stages in the output of the persist seizure detector algorithm. The seizure probability that is shown in the picture represents the probability that the epoch represents an electrographic seizure. For instance, if an epoch were given a value of 0.2, we would expect that there is a 20% chance that this epoch represents an electrographic seizure. The seizure probability trend provides a second-by-second -second display of the calculated seizure probability. This contrasts with the seizure detection trend that provides a discrete value of 0 or 1 depending on whether a seizure has been detected. The seizure probability trend provides more detail about the results of the persist seizure detection algorithm than the seizure detection trend. This detailed seizure probability information may be relevant to users who would like to see cases where there is some indication of seizure activity that does not rise to a sufficient level to be considered a seizure detection. It may also be useful to understand the level of certainty in cases where there is a seizure detection. The seizure probability trend uses a bar graph to show the persistent seizure detector output scaled so that at each one second interval the height of the bar represents the probability that the interval represents an electrographic seizure. Since the seizure detection probability function 
is validated at discrete values of 0 0.0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and so on up to 1.0, only those discrete values are presented. The rhythmicity spectrogram trend is often displayed separately for the left and the right hemispheres, but may be modified to display individual channels or group of channels. It's very similar to the color density spectral array or FFT spectrogram trend that's described in the next slide, because time is on the x-axis and frequency is on the y-axis. Although the power is displayed by color coding, darker blue color indicating more power, it differs from color density spectral array by only displaying the power in components that have a high degree of rhythmicity, instead of displaying all the power. Seizures will appear as areas that are darker in color as it is shown in the picture. Since seizures often consist of a gradual increase, evolution in frequency, amplitude and or rhythmicity, the progression of the seizure can often be appreciated on the rhythmicity spectrogram more so than other trends. Seizures on the rhythmicity spectrogram will show a gradual incline with when the frequency is increasing or decline when the frequency is decreasing. The stereotype nature of seizures can be appreciated on the rhythmicity spectrum. FFT power trends and spectrograms offer poor time versus frequency resolution and tend to obscure rhythmic activity. The spectrogram shows the color-coded power spectrum. It's useful for detecting changes in the frequency content of the EEG. Additionally, the spectrogram gives qualitative details of the frequency distribution. The spectrogram is basically a 3D image, time, frequency and power, projected onto a 2D surface, time and frequency where the color of each pixel represents the power. For instance, dark blue color represents low power, dark red represents high power. The vertical axis shows frequency. So, increasing bright color over both hemispheres represents an increase in power at higher frequencies, as it shown in the picture corresponding to the right hemisphere where a seizure occurred. As I previously said, it differs from rhythmicity spectrogram by only displaying all the power instead of displaying the power in components that have a high degree of rhythmicity. That is the reason why sometimes users are not able to distinguish artifacts from seizures by using FFT spectrogram. The asymmetry index trend is commonly displayed as an absolute asymmetry index and a relative asymmetry index. The absolute asymmetry index, yellow band, compares the difference in power at each pair of homologous electrodes, sums the absolute values and displays a total asymmetry score. This score is always positive and goes up with increasing asymmetry in any frequency or direction. The relative asymmetry index green band calculates asymmetry at each pair of homologous electrodes, but shows literally. If the trend is down going, there is more power on the left hemisphere, and if up going, there is more power on the right. The relative asymmetry index is mainly used for identifying lateralized or focal seizure or on patients suffering ischemia stroke. 
The asymmetry spectrogram is similar to a color spectrogram. So on the y axis we have frequency, on the x axis the time and the color is the power. But the trend shows the difference in power at each frequency from 1 to 18 Hz averaged over the entire hemisphere. So if there is more power on the right at a particular frequency the spectrogram will show more red signal. If more power on the left the spectrogram will show more blue. Perfect symmetry would show no color on this trend. Focal seizures over the left hemisphere will be represented by an increase in blue color while focal seizures over the right hemisphere are represented by an increase in red color as it shown in the picture. Asymmetry index and asymmetry spectrogram may detect very subtle focal seizures not seen on other trends while generalized seizures will not be visualized at all on asymmetry trends. The suppression ratio trend displays a running average of the percentage of EEG activity that falls below a user-specified amplitude threshold as a function of time. Time is displayed on the x-axis and the suppression ratio measure percentage on the y-axis, where the blue line represents the suppression ratio in the left hemisphere and the red line shows the suppression ratio in the right hemisphere. Bar suppression is an electrocephalogram pattern observed in status of severally reduced brain activity, such as general anesthesia, hypothermia, and anoxic brain injuries. The suppression ratio trend is very helpful when a coma is medically induced and the doctors need to monitor the percentage of suppression of the EEG for preserving the brain activity, keeping under control the level of medication to deliver to the patient. In addition, the onset of seizures can be controlled given specific medications, antiepileptic drugs, and so decreasing or increasing the dose of the medication the seizures can arise or can be blocked. The doctor can find and define the threshold dose which ensures the proper level of antiepileptic drugs for the patient in order to avoid the onset of the seizures and so protect and preserve the brain functionality during the monitoring. The doctor can use the suppression ratio trend for monitoring the percentage of suppressed EEG and so the level of medication in order to avoid that some seizures can occur during the monitoring. The brief introduction to persist is over and I'm going to show you the software giving you a live demonstration on the operation and showing you the main software features. During the live demonstration, I will show you how to activate the Persist analysis, how to use the Persist workspace, and how to take advantage of the main commands and features of the software for viewing the EEG. Once you have purchased the Persist license and you have installed the software on your review or acquisition station, you have to activate the Persist analysis from within the Netos database. You have to click on Tools in the main menu and then Options. Once the Natus Database Options window appears, click on Analysis and then on the Add button in order to show the analyzer's list and then select Persist from the list. At this stage, we can select a study type, for instance, EEG only, and then the activation mode by clicking on Always. This selection makes the persistent analysis available for the EEG studies only, and the process will start when the study begins. Once the selection is completed, click on OK. 
In order to run the analysis, select the study and click on Analyze. Check the box with the blue check mark and click on Submit. So, since the study has a long duration, the process would take too much time before showing the results of the calculation. So, I skip the process and I directly open the study review mode by selecting the study and click on Review. The NeuroWorks review screen appears and shows us the recorded montage. In order to open the Persist view, you can click with the right button either on the main toolbar and select Persist, or click on the workspace icon on the left side and select the Persist workspace that I previously created. The layout is composed by the annotation viewer on the left side, where all events are displayed. and a persist view where you can choose to display the EEG view, the trends view, or both the EEG and the trends view. In the EEG view, you can click on the montage box in order to select the montage to display. Then, you can set the visualization parameters, for instance, the time base, the sensitivity, the low filter, the high filter, and the notch filter. By clicking on the AR button, you enable the artifact reduction, which detects and reduces physiological and elected artifacts. You can mainly see the effect on the first two traces where the original signal is shown in the background in a grey color. The trend view on the right side displays the trends that come with the default plate or panel. The panel is the panel is named ICU Comprehensive and it's a collection of the most common trends that are used in ICU applications. By clicking on the corresponding box, the system shows other panels which include a different collection of trends. For instance, by selecting Seizure Peak Envelope, the system shows other trends. You can also select the time base for instance 6 hours and then you can add one or more trends to the current panel by clicking on add and then select the trend from the list for instance, seizure detections. And then click on OK. So the system immediately adds the trend at the bottom in the panel and I can move it at the top. Even the trends view allows to use the artifact reduction. So if the EEG waveforms are noisy, the trends calculation will not be affected by the artifacts. Clicking on the R button, you can see the effect. Now the artifact reduction is off. And now it's on again. Last but not least, the events in the annotation viewer, events in the annotation viewer, the EEG view and the trends view are synchronized so that if you click on an event in the list, the EEG waveforms and the trends 
jump to the same point, allowing you to rapidly review the EG and the critical events like spikes and seizures occurred during the monitoring. Let's see now another interesting feature provided by Persis, the Spike Review. By clicking on the Spike Review window in the Persis workspace, the system opens a new window where all spikes which were found in the recording are summarized and averaged by Spike Focus. In the current view, the system shows an overview of the spikes by showing the number of spikes that were marked at each electorate. I can click on each electorate in order to expand and display all the spikes detected at the electrode, for instance F8, which has 549 spikes. Now the system shows us all the 549 detections. Then I can go back to the overview in order to select a different electrode, for instance F4, and review all spikes detected at this electrode. I also can select the All Spikes view that shows us all the detections. At this stage, if I am interested in finding the spikes in the recording, I can click the time at the top of a spike and the system will immediately jump to the EG to that page. So from the main menu you can use the perception command in order to set the level of sensitivity used for detecting spikes. For instance, by clicking on high, the system will increase the level of sensitivity and will detect an higher number of spikes with the probability to detect more false positives. Vice versa by selecting a low sensitivity. So depending on the duration or, and the number of the spikes, the system will take time for detecting spikes according to the level of sensitivity. So, for instance, with a high sensitivity, the system detects 1,278 spikes at A8 and 549 spikes with a low sensitivity. You also can change the EEG sensitivity. Filters. and enable the artifact reduction, like in the EEG view. Last but not least, you can turn voltage map on and the system will calculate the voltage map for each displayed detection and then you can decide to expand the spike in order to better review the result. Then click on maps again for turning it off and go back to the persist workspace.